Hey everyone, if you're new to Blender, then you've come to the right place. In this video, we'll be taking a tour of the Blender workspace. When you first open Blender, you should see a splash screen like this one. We're just going to ignore that and left click somewhere else on the screen to get to our default workspace. And the main elements of the workspace are the main menu over here in the upper left corner where you can save and load files. You can also edit user preferences and uh, do a number of other things. The next thing that I want to bring to your attention is this main window here that is taking up most of the screen. And this is called the viewport and gives us a view of our scene and is the place where we'll be doing most of our work. Uh, so you can see that the view space contains several default elements. The first being a camera, which I'm going to right click to select. The camera takes a picture of our scene and records video, and we can export images through the camera to a file. Next is our 3D model, the cube, which you can edit, move around, and model. After that is our light source, which is a lamp. This is a point light and it lights our scene. And last but not least is our 3D cursor. And the 3D cursor functions like a 2D cursor in a word processing program in that when you type in text in, for example, Microsoft Word, text appears as a cursor. Well, the 3D cursor is the same idea when you add a new object to the viewport. For example, if you add a new camera or a cube or a light or an image or whatever, it will appear where the 3D cursor is located. So same idea as a 2D cursor in a word processing program. The next thing I want to bring to your attention is the toolbox, which is here on the left side of the screen. This is very similar to a toolbox that you might see in a regular 2D drawing program like Photoshop. Here's where you'll find your brushes, your erasers, your selection tools. Um, if you head over to the toolbox and hover your mouse over the edge, you'll see this arrow icon. And if you click and drag to the uh, right, you'll be able to see the names of each of these icons, which will tell you a little bit more information. You can also hover your mouse and it'll give you some information about what that tool does. Now the toolbox will change or the tools in the toolbox will change depending on which section of Blender you're in. So just keep that in mind. The next thing I want to look at is this small window in the upper right corner. This window is called the outliner. And it sort of functions like a file browser, uh, except that instead of you know looking at organizing files, you're organizing. It provides you a list of all of the objects in your scene, and you can organize them into folders. You can do a search for specific items, just like a regular file browser. So this main folder is called Scene Collection, and Blender calls folders collections instead of folders, but they function, they serve the same purpose. And under this scene collection folder, we have a subfolder called collections. And if we click on the icon next to that subfolder, you'll see a list of all the items in our viewport. So here's our camera, I'm left clicking, a cube, our cube, and our lamp. And just like a regular file browser, you can create a new folder, you can rename folders, I'll just call this folder. And you can also uh, rename objects. So I'll rename the cube Bob the box. And you can drag Bob into another folder. You can run a search if you wanted to. So I'll search for Bob and I'll find all the objects named Bob. This little icon here is a um, advanced search option. And here's a shortcut to create a new folder if you wanted to. So, yeah, pretty self-explanatory. You can play around with that if you want. This basically helps us to organize and manage our uh, assets. 
And this little window here below our outliner, this is our properties uh, window. And here you can edit various properties like the color of the background. You can create new brushes. Um, you can set the dimensions of your project. Right now it's set to 1920 by 1080. These are our render settings, by the way. All right, so the next thing that I want to look at here is our shading modes. And you have four different shading modes here. This basically, uh, these are options to show how the viewport, how you want to look at the viewport. So this first icon is wireframe mode. And as you can see, uh, it doesn't show surfaces, it displays everything as lines and uh, points. And this mode is useful for 3D modeling. The next shading mode is called solid mode. And this shows you the surfaces of the object and gives you some basic lighting. But it doesn't show you textures or colors or images. Look dev mode is the next mode above that. And this does show you colors, lights, and images. The mode above that is the rendered view mode. And this shows you, this gives you a preview of what your final image will look like when you export a movie or a picture. Next, we're going to look at adding and collapsing windows. So what you do is you hover your mouse cursor over any corner of any one of these windows and you'll see that a crosshair appears and what you do is you left click with your mouse and drag in a direction and there you see we've got a new window left click with your mouse at any corner and drag in a direction whoops didn't want to do that drag in a direction you create a new window now to collapse a window you do the same thing except for one minor difference you hover your mouse cursor over a corner once you see the crosshairs, move it slightly in the direction of one window and then drag, left click with your mouse and drag it in another uh, towards the other window to collapse. Hover your mouse over a corner, move it slightly in the direction of one window and then left click with your mouse and drag it in the direction of another. Otherwise, what you're going to be doing is creating new windows. So that's the that's the difference between collapsing and adding new windows. And the one rule about collapsing windows is that uh, each window must share a side. So as you can see, these two windows here, they share a side. And that side that they share must be the exact same length. So as you can see, these two windows share a side and it's the exact same length. So that means you can collapse these two in on each other. Now, if we take the viewport and try to collapse it into the outliner window, the small outliner window here, you'll see that they both, these two windows do share a side, but the outliner window side is much shorter than the viewport window side. So you won't be able to, oops, you won't be able to uh, collapse these windows into each other, as you can see. As a general rule, it's a good idea to save on a regular basis. So why don't we do that right now? We're going to head over to our main menu, which we discussed earlier. Click on File and click on Save. And here you can click on this bar and name your file. I'm going to call this Save, whoops, save File. And if you head over here to the right, you'll see this plus and minus button. The plus button will add a number to the end of your file name. The minus button will decrease the number. If you keep clicking on the plus sign, you'll see that it increases the number next to your file name. And this just makes it easier for you to save your file in increments. And then once you're done, you just click Save Blender File. Finally, I just want you to know that if this seems like a lot, don't worry. Blender is a combination of many different programs and each of those programs or apps does a different thing so for example if we head over to the upper left corner of the viewport window 
you'll notice that there's an icon here and each of those windows has an icon. If you click on that, you'll see a list of some of the apps that Blender has to offer. Blender calls them editors and each of these editors, as you'll see, does a different thing. So we have a UV image editor, which is Blender's version of Photoshop. We have a compositing app, which is like After Effects. We have a text editor, which is for people who like to program or code or script. So there's a lot of different programs. You won't need to know all of them. In this video series, we're only be covering the, the basics. So you won't have to know everything. But if you do want to come back uh, once you're comfortable with the basics, you can always do that and learn about other aspects of Blender. So just keep that in mind as you're taking in all this information. And this concludes our tour of the Blender workspace. See you in the next video.